recently, in the past few days, uh, Dwayne Wade retired NBA great, going to be in the Hall of Fame. He had a moment on the Ellen show where he was describing to her that his 12-year-old son, um, 12-year-old daughter, uh, approached him and his wife, Gabrielle Union, and addressed that he would, she would. that she would like to be referred to as Zaya and be referred to as a woman with the pronouns her and she and D Wade being the great dad that he is embracing this doing his best to support his son his daughter and just make her feel as comfortable as she needs to feel coming out and feeling these feelings and here's why I totally support it um you hear that like a parent's love is unconditional Mm -hmm. and so I grow. I grew up in a homophobic um, household, and like so, certain things. Not only like homophobia, but other things. There's just like if you do this, I'll abandon you. If you do this, I'll you know whatever. You're not my child. And I was like, damn. I guess it is conditional. <laughs> so, <laughs> so many so, conditions. If I came to my parents and said that I was queer, and they reject me, well, then, like, you didn't love me unconditionally. And, like, I feel some type of way. I'll be slighted. So mm-hmm. C&D way just say, you know what? This is my daughter. She's who is, she is who she is. And I'm accepting her and I'm proud of her and love her and you know, got her back regardless. I'm so with it. Conditional love is not <laughs> great when you're a parent. <laughs> nah. I'll, I'll love you as long as you do exactly what I say, how I say it, yeah. when I say it, things like that. I'm with it 100%. Um, my thing is, so when I was 12 years old, I definitely knew that I liked girls. There was no doubt about that. Right. Right. Um, from what I understand about this story, his, uh, his daughter, his, his daughter, which is, was assigned as a male, uh, when she was born has decided that this is a, I guess a transition that she will begin at a certain point in time in the future. Correct. Yes. I, I don't know if I feel 150% comfortable. I know it. Listen, like I said, I know at 12 years old, I like girls as far as like sexuality and things like that. But as far as the sex that she ultimately wants to be, is mm-hmm. that something that we can trust at 12 okay. years old? I've watched so many. I'm lying. I watched probably like two documentaries on mm-hmm. like intersex kids and things because my... um. My field is education, and I want to. I want to have a space where um, Black and Brown students are comfortable, regardless of what they identify as. And one of the stories that stuck out to me was um, this little girl. She was being she's transgender, so she was um, she she kept being bullied. So she says to her mom one day, she was like, um, "Are transgender people bullied in heaven?" And she wow. said. And then, and the mom said, no, she's like, well, then I want to die. And I was just like, geez, Louise. That's heavy. Word. And I was like, you, you ain't even hit puberty yet. Right. So I'm like, you know what? Do what you want. If you change your mind tomorrow, you change your mind tomorrow. No, I'm all for going for how you feel and fully embracing it. And then having, having two black parents embrace it. And awesome. even his older his older siblings Zaire. embrace it yeah. is remarkable, and mm-hmm. it's something that's not normal, and it's mm-hmm. something that should become the norm. I don't. I mean, what what do you hold a twelve year old to? What decisions or commitments do you really hold a twelve year old to? I mean, it's not like what job do you want? What's your ideal job? If this is something we're in, and we don't know, right? If you innately feel this way, then fine, let it. Be. Like I can't, I don't, I can't. I'm not in their shoes, so I can't say, "Oh, you're 12. You don't know what you're feeling." I don't know what that feels like to say, "You're only 12, so you can't make this decision right now." Like I said, my only concern is putting that much, I guess, giving them right and trust behind behind a 12 year old when it comes to anything. But you're right, because at 12, we all knew our sexuality. Mm-hmm. We, as a man, as a as a boy, I felt boy like I, I wanted to be a boy. Like I, at one point, I wanted to grow up and grow facial hair. That shit didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but it's like I felt 
like boy. I felt boy and I'm going to be a man. It's, I am boy. Exactly. And at some point I'm going to be a man. I'm still waiting for that point where I become a man. And get that facial hair. And get that facial hair. <laughs> Absolutely. Because this, this shit is just teasing me. To me, I just, I think I'm being selfish and like thinking about myself in the situation. You of course you are. And, then, and thinking how I would either react as, as D. Wade or as his mom or as Gabrielle Union in that situation. Right. And how, I mean, it's, it seems like Zay is a very intelligent and like yeah. intelligent beyond her years when it comes to the way that, um, Wade described she came to him and had the discussion right. with him about this. Right. And the even the the video that they had at like I guess the golf court. Yes. Golf course, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Court basketball, my fault. Um, you know, she was definitely like, you know, you gotta be comfortable in your own skin. You know what I'm saying? You can't be someone else um, you know, walking around planet Earth. I get it. Yeah, Isaiah said, What's the point of being on this earth if you're going to try to be someone you're not? It's like you're not even living the it's not it's like you're not even living like yourself, which is like the dumbest concept to me. Be true and don't really care what the stereotypical way of like being you is. I wasn't I wasn't that smart at 12. I couldn't say that shit at 12 years old. I could. I know. I, I mean, that's you. That's not me. Me. Me at 12 years old is I boy. I jock. I play basketball. I run fast. I jump fence. Yeah. But yeah, let's definitely give it up to D Wade and, and and Gabrielle Union for hopefully starting a trend that that continues. Because like you said, there are a lot of black households where, you know, the love is great, the love is cool, it's amazing, but until it's conditional. It's right. like until you bring a white woman home, until right. you tell me that you're oh, gay. Yeah, I've had one of those situation conversations too. What if you bring a white guy home? Yeah, I I didn't tell my dad. But what do you think would have happened if? I don't think he would have took it well. He was incarcerated at the time, so he didn't know. <laughs> no, was he? <laughs> no, I don't remember.